Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, depending on where in the world you're tuning in from. My name is Seiya, and I am your host with the most guests today. This is episode one of Sitting with Seiya. We've got my couch, we've got my other couch, which is not a couch, it's a chair. There we go. And we've got a TV and wondering what's happening in the TV. Well, listen, we've got three really, really cool guests today. We've got a traditional streamer. Um, we've got a um, VTuber and we've got somebody who creates podcasts. So we've got three content creators who are going to give you the best advice that they can possibly give you. We're going to talk a little bit about VTubing and Twitch streaming and podcasting and the like. Um, and listen, grab your notepad your digital stuff, whatever it is, your phone, take some notes and hopefully we can all help you become better creators. So let's introduce the first one, which is going to be Tazzy. Let's introduce yourself. Um, give us a quick short intro and ask, tell us why you started. Hello, so I'm Tazzy. I stream on Twitch and also make content on other platforms. Um, I uh, stream like a variety of games and I really got started uh, kind of like fell into it um because I've always been like on camera and doing things um and I I like way back I just like started about 20 YouTube channels growing up um and also streamed on a platform called Ustream which is now like just a business streaming platform um and was just like silly around the camera and then I sort of landed on my current YouTube channel Tazzy um and got to a point where I realized I could also just stream games, um, which I, I needed an excuse to play games because I felt like I was being really unproductive while I was playing games and found out I could stream them. Uh, so I ended up on Twitch. <laughs> awesome. And then our guest number two is going to be Minho. Give us a short introduction and tell us why you started. Hello, I'm Minho. I'm a VTuber, V streamer, and V singer. I stream mainly on Twitch and I am more known for my scuff content and sometimes I just don't get scared at any horror games. <laughs> the reason why I, <laughs> the reason why I started was uh I uh happened to be on my friend stream and it appeared that the people on their chat uh, really like uh, my voice and how I was giving them content even without streaming. So I was suggested to start a stream and I did, which uh, turned out to be really good for me since I got to my affiliate really quickly. So yeah, <laughs> that's about it. Awesome. Thanks, Minho. And then finally, guest number three, um, saving the best till last, I guess. No, not really. You're, I love you all equally. You're all as good as everyone. <laughs> um, we have Bish from Get Alive Podcast, introduce yourself and why did you start? Uh, yeah, so it's me, Bish from the Get Alive Podcast. Uh, I've been podcasting for 11 years on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, all of those lovely platforms. Uh, I kind of got into podcasting because I was really into anime and gaming, but I didn't have a voice and I was getting bullied because of, you know, my interests. So I was like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm going to get myself a voice. I'm going to do this podcasting thing. And it's a... Uh, been going well ever since love that love that fuck it i'm gonna do what i want um i know you didn't ask it. but i'm gonna say what i did <laughs> um so <laughs> if you didn't know my name is saya um from um another universe earth 333 just remembered it it's okay um and i started because um i used to be i used to stream for another company and essentially i wasn't allowed to stream as myself due to a clash of interest but i joined a new company and i did a couple of bits of streams for them and i thought you know what let me ask if i'm allowed to stream and they said yes so i didn't want to use my previous brand um i'm using uh i decided to start fresh with vtubing and that's basically why i started um and you know just going on on that like i think i started something like i i got into vtubing in back in december 20 wait we're 2021 right yeah back yeah. in december 2019 i got into vtubing <laughs> back in 2019 when i watched uh matt Suri's band-aid video if you haven't watched it i'll put the link in the description as well because i think you all need to watch that <laughs> but that's what sucked me into vtubing and i got i went into that hole um everyone has a different journey of how they got into vtubing and i spent pretty much since december 2019 till about um october just researching the community on reddit that are virtual youtubers the um the VTuber community on Twitter, trying to understand it, um, trying to get to grips of like 
what the hell is going on because it is a mess um but also it's very insightful um and you know i think i debuted i debuted in um december um of 2020 i think i started streaming in roughly october ish but just to create content so people had something to look at when they go to click on my profile because i wasn't about that life of like creating stuff and <laughs> not having anything for anyone to watch um, and that's kind of my prep of what I did before I started and how I got to where I am now. Um, I guess, uh, Minho, did you do any prep before you started VTubing? Absolutely not. <laughs> I just uh, went for the flow of everything and hoped for the best. And the best did come because, you know, some, some things happened to be aligned at the time I started. So yeah, <laughs> no prep and scuff content sometimes does help. <laughs> You're not a VTuber unless you've had scuff content. I think that's a requirement. Also, a yeah. requirement is to play yeah. Minecraft and play Apex Legends, apparently, which I don't do both. So, <laughs> I'm not a VTuber. <laughs> okay. Not yet, not yet, not yet. Not yet, yet not yet. <laughs> um, Bish, did you do any prep for podcasting? Um, obviously, you've been doing it for a long, long time. So, um, and you, you said you started when you were 15. So, I expect, like, you know, when I was 15, I basically would just jump into things. Like, assuming it's the same for you. Mm. Yeah, basically, I was just going to say, fuck no, no prep at all. I didn't even know what podcasts were until I owned an iPod. And then, you know, I only needed a computer and a microphone. So I got one of those, you know, those shitty microphones from the 90s. You know, those ones that are desktop ones and they just have like, that little goose neck thing. Uh, and I used an old gateway computer that was running Windows XP and I just recorded it and I put it out there in the world. So that was my prep, I guess. Love that. <laughs> and, and this seems to be a running theme. And I'm assuming there are loads of other people who are completely different to me who did a buttload of prep. <laughs> um, but <laughs> um, Tazzy, did you do any prep? Um, you're going to say no. I know it. Yeah, I just kind of like, it kind of just happened. I just, I just, I'm like one of those people that's really great at just being thrown in the deep end and figuring it out as I go along. It's sort of like the best way I learn and the best way I create. Um, so I didn't do much prep. I mean, as I go on, like I do a lot of learning and figuring things out. But yeah, beforehand, it, not really. Mm, uh, do you know what? Um, I'm going to ask this as a quick round robin as well. Like, obviously, you never did prep beforehand. Um, do you prep now? Yeah. <laughs> 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 So I, I I kind of there was a point where I was like my I'm not happy with my content mm. um there was just like stuff that I like I, my mic was always muted or like stuff was just like constantly going wrong at the beginning of streams and some of it can never be helped like you're always gonna have issues as a streamer even mm. as like just if you're doing pre-recorded content mm. there's always an issue um but mm. like I just wasn't happy with it with with it I was like it's missing something so I I, I created like a script for my streams, right? Mm. Um, and like uh, had that and I had like a little checklist of like everything I needed to check before I go live. Um, and then started using that and now I don't use it. But um, for like a good, I don't know, like six months maybe, mm. I used that every time I went live. Um, and it just creates like a really good habit. But yeah. now I don't really use it. Sometimes I'm like, if I'm really tired, I'm like, let me use the list. Just the list. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, like, nah, I like, I don't really prep. I do phrases like of, of like, oh, I want to correct this thing. So mm. I like sit there and do loads of research or want to add a new thing. But yeah. Right, right, right. Um, uh, why are you, Minho? Do you do any prep? Uh, uh, sorry, no. now? You still don't <laughs> I, do any prep? I, I do, I, I... I, I don't I just I just go straight into it. Mm -hmm. Uh I always have I always have games in hand that I I will I will play. Uh cuz like uh I'm I'm known for uh my phasmophobia games or any horror games so when like we don't know what to do I'll I'll just play those horror games cuz I I guess people like it when they they when a jump scare happens I'm mm. just like oh nice. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Yeah, I'm the complete opposite. I can't handle that jump scare stuff. <laughs> mm. uh, and and um, Bish, what about now? Do you do any prep beforehand? 
Yes, I do a lot of prep now because we're we're running multiple podcasts and we have a whole team of of people making content. So uh, on the anime podcast, because we watch every episode, we have to write notes and shit. Mm. So that's really in depth. That takes like a month of planning just to do one episode. Um, we do a lot of meetings, and I think before on the gaming podcast, it was just like, oh fuck it, let's just talk about the game, blah blah blah, have fun. <laughs> we still do have fun, but. When you're dealing with a lot of gaming companies and when you're speaking to a lot of PR companies and trying to get people on board to interview them, you have to give them a set of questions. You don't need to follow the guide, right. but you just need to give them a set of questions so they can approve it. So there's a lot of approval process. Even right. if I don't ask them, there's still a lot of shit that goes on. So it's kind of come back around to bite me in the ass. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> yeah, do you know what? For me, it's like... Um said this before but i'm hella organized um and so i do a lot of prep anyway uh obviously you were all prepped prior to this episode with a bunch of questions and i double checked as well if there were any things that you'd prefer not to answer as well so i'm i'm quite an organized guy and like in terms of like for my streams i generally have a checklist obviously okay full disclosure behind the scenes we've had to record this first bit again because i didn't do that checklist but <laughs> 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 it's great it's fine it's fine but usually i have a checklist of everything that i need to do prior to streaming and then i've got like um mm. sticky notes on my desktop so um because uh when i'm streaming sometimes again if you've not got viewers one of the key things and i think this helped because of what i do for a living is that um if there's no there's no viewers no interaction for you you've got to create content that people so if people jump in you're doing stuff so i always have like um, discussion topics of things that I can talk about um, if all of a sudden I I am not talking about like the game or anything like that or I want to incite conversation so um, I, that's a pro tip from me I guess just as a somebody who just presents um, in general um, but yeah preparation what we've learned is when we first started we didn't do any preparation and it got us oh so far but now that we're that at that point we kind of do need to do some preparation so that's a key one for all of you VTubers out there so one thing that pretty much every content creator um, in general struggles with is, you know, building the brand, building those followers and stuff like that. Um, I know for me, it's been really slow, but that's because I haven't really been um, as active as I should be on things like social media. Um, from a VTuber side, I find a lot of um, followers can be built through collaborations, um, which is basically co-streaming for traditional streamers, right? Um, so collaborations with other VTubers and just kind of reaching out and stuff like that. Um, with, uh, for, for you three, I think I want to start with Bish for this question because you've been doing this for a long time. How did you build hmm. your followers up from, from the get-go and, and, you know, create it to what it is now? Okay. Uh, that's quite interesting because, um, when I started, it wasn't about building followers. It was just about making friends, you know? So it's just mm -hmm. I go into these communities, go into forums, go on Tumblr or on Twitter and stuff, and just be like, hey, guys, I like these games. And that was it. And I would just talk to people. And a lot of people that even, uh, you know, are hosts on the podcast now, I've met, the, well, I've met them in real life, but also I've met them, built that friendship first. And it was never really about building followers i know that's not necessarily the answer that you want <laughs> yeah um sure. <laughs> but it's to me it was never really about that but at the same time you find that you build a fan base that way when you're just making friends and then someone else is like oh i'm mutual friends with this guy let's talk have a conversation whatnot and it kind of builds quickly i don't know if that's the right method to use now but at least back then when the community was a lot smaller mm. it was um very easy to do and even now i still treat it that way like i'm not not gonna if someone reaches out to me i'm not gonna ignore them if someone sends me an email i'll respond to their email not always at the same time not always straight away but i'll, I'll always get to that so that's how i go around building a community just making friends really right 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 oh, okay um and and tazzy how about you um mine's really similar like i didn't i didn't set out to build a following like my goal was never like build a following it wasn't until later when people like uh sort of sort of started to get into the community of twitch mm. that was like people were like very uh follower focused right right um and then i sort of went through a phase where i was really follower focused and now i've sort of like reverted back to my old ways which is about the creation sure, sure. and about the the yeah. enjoyment behind it but that's why i started like just because i like it um so like a lot of my following on twitch has sort of come from 
my Instagram, like I have a big, in, not big, but in terms of all my, <laughs> all, all my platforms, my right. Instagram is the biggest. Um, yeah. And uh, that's the, um, the only place, I don't know, I've never, I like go through phases where I'm like, okay, I'm going to push for, for the sort of like next, mm. like, like the next milestone milestone exactly um and then so then i'll like use hashtags and da, da, da. i just have like loads of really good practices on instagram that i'm used to just from being on instagram since like near its beginning um and like so yeah i've never really gone to like make a following i just want to mm. talk to people yeah and like interact with people um so it's kind of the same like a lot of my following has come from just making friends um like other friends in the community that do stuff that I do or that I like the games they play and like watching. So when I started Twitch, when I sort of uh, went through that, like I can't actually stream because my internet is absolute terrible. <laughs> uh, I started watching a lot like Twitch, uh, right. which I hadn't really, I watched a couple of people before. I had my very select favorites and I still watch those to this day. But then I started to watch cool. more people and through that found more people and, like got talking to people and a lot of people were like oh you should stream I and mean, i was like well actually i am planning to stream so <laughs> just when i have an internet connection that allows it um and then yeah like it just slowly like very slowly very slowly builds up um yeah i don't know i just do stuff <laughs> <laughs> that's that's um yeah it, it seems to be like um well until we find out what minho's journey was but it seems to be like a current Friend as to how your you grew your you grew yourself as a brand um minho how about you honestly it's literally the same i <laughs> i didn't think about uh i didn't even think about uh gaining followers when i started i was just like since people want me to stream like to see my point of view on on how i play games and all that i'll stream and all of a sudden all the all the numbers came in and i'm just like uh <laughs> Maybe I should take this seriously now. Mm. <laughs> so uh, I think I I went through the I'm I'm whatever I don't care about numbers too I care about numbers <laughs> now now I'm back to I don't care about numbers. <laughs> <laughs> okay. yeah. it's, it's, it's just the it's just the process you have to go through like uh once once you realize uh you might uh actually be good at, at doing this streaming thing I guess. Yeah. Yeah. And I think uh, yeah. you know what it's you're right it's it's I think it's an important thing to to have as a content creator is first and foremost um and for everyone out there that probably there's going to be a whole bunch of people that disagree but focus on your content first 100% um and and you, yeah. you're hearing this from three different content creators um you know who have started three different very different journeys and and gone into very different platforms and avenues for creating content but ultimately and i think uh, you know i don't want to make any assumptions but you'll all agree with me like your audience will like you for your content and not necessarily for um yep. <laughs> the numbers right so 100%. yeah and, and i think there's this really big thing in in the vtubing world which is um you know i and i say this because i will do the same thing like if i'm looking through the vtuber community and i go oh damn that's a really nice avatar i'll go i'll give them a like or a follow right <laughs> on on twitter but it's literally based on the yeah, avatar. Yeah. The moment I go into some of these these um, VTuber streams um, and their content, I, they either if they don't have content, then they're just they're literally just a follow on on Twitter. I, like I see some of their social media posts, but I don't tune into any of their streams. But there are times where I've gone into people's streams and their content um, is um, in the nicest way possible. Very. Uh, uh stale um it's it's <laughs> not just because they're not you mean shit that's what you want to say but it's not um especially in twitch culture right and 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 tazzy you could probably um explain this a little bit better but i would say that twitch culture really focuses on engagement with um with your your chat and engagement um being engaging in general um, so if I turn up to a, ch a, a Twitch stream and they're not talking for like a good 10, 15, 20 minutes, like literally not saying anything and just playing a game, I'm going to tune out. I'm probably going to tune out within the first three minutes if they've not said anything in three minutes. Yeah, like Twitch, yeah. Twitch purpose is like 
to interact with chat unless you're like a pro gamer like mm. actual pro gamer um and then people might be there for, like are probably there for actual gameplay um but for like the vast majority of people on twitch people are there for for you and like i'm a variety streamer so mm. people are definitely there for me and not gameplay because <laughs> <laughs> I'm not good and like I don't play I don't even play the same genre of games I'm just like ah today I feel like playing this and I'm gonna play that um so yeah it's definitely about the the interaction with chat mm -hmm. and and Minho you're also on Twitch right you're not on YouTube right yeah I, I started on Twitch because uh for I think growing your channel I believe Twitch would be better for me because like I'm, I'm not gonna do YouTube uh edited stuff so Twitch was the better platform for me. Mm -hmm. And and obviously, um, one of the biggest milestones for Twitch is the affiliate, um, being part of that mm -hmm. affiliate program. Mm -hmm. um, how easy or difficult was it for 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 the both of you? Um, and um, you know, what kind of advice can you give to people to who are struggling to hit that affiliate status? Uh, let's start with you, Tazzy. Uh, cool. Um, first of all, I would say, like, stop caring about affiliate status. It's not as great as it seems. Um, True. <laughs> affiliate status is, like, a great way for Twitch to kind of, like, control you. Um, so, yeah, like, my first thing would be, like, stop caring about it so much. It's not that big of a deal. Um, and it's very easy to hit. Uh, like, I... So I started streaming before the affiliate status existed. Mm. And then um, it like happened and I hit it like one or two months after it started. Um, and I literally hit it because I got raided. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> so it just like pushed my average, mm -mm -mm. like mm. astronomically. Um, and so it was just like, I think the average viewership is only like free yeah. to hit affiliate, which is really not that big. Um, and like my, my honest top tip about affiliate is like, stop focusing on, on trying to get affiliate status because it actually limits your potential to make content. Um, and like really think about if you want affiliate status, it's great to have, obviously it's great having emotes and we all love that. And there's loads of features like voting in polls that you can't do, uh, without like, you can't have a lot of the integrated Twitch stuff, but you can do all that stuff outside, like without having Twitch at twitch's support from it mm. um and by not like by not being an affiliate streamer you can stream to any platform at the same time you're not like affiliateship ties you down to like exclusivity for the first 24 hours with twitch you can't stream at the same time on other platforms mm. so like if any like when mixer sort of like started lifting off it's like oh yeah i want to also try that out but it's like oh wait i'd have to stream on different days yeah Rip mixer. And that can be, yeah, it can be really limited, limiting. But if you've decided, like, if you realize, like, nope, you're definitely only ever going to stream on Twitch um, and you really don't care, like, just stream consistently and also, like, post on other platforms, whether that's Twitter, Instagram, maybe you do make YouTube videos just to have your content somewhere else because there's, like, basically zero discoverability actually on Twitch. Mm, that's really, really good advice. Uh, Minho, well, how about you? And and what's your thoughts on Twitch? And you know, what were your? How hard was it for you? Oh, you said it was uh, easy. You did it in three days, didn't you? It, 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 <laughs> it was it was, uh, it, it was basically joked around my friends that I did the ninety percent speed run for affiliate. <laughs> oh. So it's like <laughs> so it, it was easy for me, but I think it was kind of uh, in their communities. I was always active in the chats and all that. Mm. So uh, more, more people were like more uh, comfortable with me, so they came to watch my streams. They knew who I were, who I was already, so it's like pretty easy for them to uh, just come and uh, enjoy my content. Cause I, I'm pretty sure uh, the people I was with and my content uh, it correlates a lot. Cause uh, <laughs> I was always on their stream, so in the end the content was just similar and everyone just liked it. Yeah. For if people want affiliate and what they should do is just stop looking at the numbers. <laughs> Once you uh, stop looking at numbers, uh, it will really, really help you with the average viewer thing. Mm -hmm. Because uh, you'll be more yourself, which means it will attract uh, more people to watch you while, while you're streaming. And you won't even realize that suddenly you go from one viewer and then suddenly it'll grow to three, five, maybe 10. 
and then eventually you grow and grow and grow. It's like, <laughs> just be yourself and everything will be cool and you get affiliate just like that. Bam! <laughs> There's like a button you can click. Like, so I, it, like, yeah. if you're on Twitch and uh, like you're, you've got your dashboard there or maybe you use like uh, Streamlabs OBS or uh, Stream Elements Live, like click it and it will click the number, it will hide it. And mm. like, just hide, hide all the numbers. Don't have any numbers. Concentrate on playing the game, being yourself, concentrate on the content. It's like the best way to, like, if when I, when I concentrate on my content, like I enjoy streams more, people enjoy my streams more. I see the most growth when I like, do not care mm. about the numbers at all. Yep, yep. Yeah, that's, that's really sound advice. Yeah, for, for, I think it took me like a month and a half to get that, um, affiliate stuff come in um i'm still not affiliated because i haven't accepted the partnership um around it and it's it's like what you mentioned earlier tazzy um the only reason i haven't is because um i'm con currently a multi-streamer so i multi-stream to both twitch and youtube which you can say is a double-edged sword because it it kind of cannibalizes my my audience so i get like a, a couple of people on twitch and a couple of people on youtube obviously through slobs like i can see the overall number but if you think about averages sometimes it doesn't really work out especially for that twitch twitch affiliate program because i'll have maybe more people that are viewing me on youtube versus people on twitch recently that's kind of switched around so it's it's gone from everyone viewing me on youtube to now viewing me on twitch which is where i got the affiliate process but because of the fact that i multi-stream i'm really reluctant about taking that affiliation um just on the basis of um the fact that um you know, that exclusivity is may, I don't know if it's going to, but for me, it could be like a hindrance to what I want to do as a whole, as for VTubing, even, even for me. And it, just even picking a platform in the first place was hard. I think eventually mm -hmm. I will move to, to YouTube completely, but for now I have a dedicated audience on YouTube and I have a dedicated audience on Twitch and I don't want to leave any of them. Yeah. So that's like a, a really kind of, um, hard thing for me um but speaking of what is the hardest uh, or what was hard for me and um, what is the hardest thing for all three of you about um you creating your content and what would what did you find the easiest um and, and bish we haven't heard from you because uh, you podcaster of course but what was the hardest thing for you about doing creating these podcasts and um what was the easiest thing about doing it uh the hardest thing is editing is the i hate it i genuinely hate it because when we started <laughs> it was like 15 minutes long uh, as in ep every episode and then it got to the point where an episode would be four hours long five hours long you have to cut it down to two hours so it would take a lot of my time so that's the worst thing to do mm. i mean it's a lot easier when it's audio compared to video because obviously you can tell where the jump cuts start when you're watching a video but um yeah that's the worst thing about podcasting um and especially because my show is heavily edited and we go on a lot of tangents right, right, right. but at the same time yep. It's it's funny. The same time, my favorite thing is, is the edit. Like I hate it, but I I love it a lot. And it's because I can spend a lot of time thinking about memes. You can craft certain things. Mm. Um, you you have the opportunity to be creative, especially at least with me when it's not live content. I could just cut shit out. I can do bloopers. I could just fuck around, and that's what I like. Um, so that's like my favorite thing, and also the least favorite thing about podcasting. Right, right. That that is, I can relate. I've only just recently started editing stuff like for my YouTube vids, and it's literally the simplest thing, like putting in subtitles without YouTube having to do it. Like you find, I get more viewers. If you are VTubers, if you're watching, if you are on YouTube, like put your own subtitles in your vids, and you'll find more people will watch it because it's easier for them to understand. Yeah. Um, and it doesn't matter if your editing's crap. Trust me. Go and go shameless plug go and check my youtube channel like the the, <laughs> the content i create the edits are so so bad they're literally the worst um but i've had like quite a fair amount of views just off the basis of stuff and i've had fans like come and sub and to both of my channels just based off of one video there was one guy who messaged me um recently um he dm'd me on twitter and he was like dude i haven't watched a a, a call of duty vid since i was like 15 and that was like whatever how many ever years ago and he's like, but I watched one of yours and I was like, I need to sub to this. So make more Call of Duty vids. And I'm like, okay, I'll make more Call of Duty vids, whatever. <laughs> like, they're, they're so, they're, they're, they're literally, they're so bad. But um, yeah. Uh, Minho, how about you? What was the easiest thing for you about VTubing and what was the hardest thing? Hmm. Well, the, 
easiest thing, huh? I don't. I don't think like uh, anything was the easy or hard. Mm. I think everything was just uh, like normal, normal, all, all that. It was just. Uh, I just went along with the flow of everything. So nothing was really hard. Nothing was really easy. It was mm. just. I went in and I did everything as it was supposed to, I guess. And this is how I be. <laughs> how I uh, got a uh, pretty all right on Twitch. It's alright for some. Had an easy journey, you know. Just chilled it. Just breeze through. <laughs> just, just a little. Just a little. <laughs> yeah. The rest of us are out here like, wow. I, you know, I've had struggles. I've seen it all. <laughs> <laughs> Tazzy, how about you? What was what was the easiest and hardest thing for you, man? About streaming. I think the majority of streaming is hard. Like, <laughs> this sounds crazy because I was like, why do you do it then? But for me, like, there's just so, I feel like there's constantly, like, difficulty with streaming. Um, mm. And it's, like, I think the easiest thing is to keep going because even though it's really hard, there's so many hard things, mm. uh, I enjoy it. So it's just easy to keep going because I like, I like what I'm trying to do and I like wh where I'm going. And I don't want the hard things to stop me. Right, like, right. I'm, I'm stubborn. Like I'm stubborn as hell. <laughs> but like some of the hardest things is like sometimes it's just having like the motivation to to be on camera, like mm. to get ready, <laughs> which is like I guess really easy for you as VTubers, and I'm so jealous. <laughs> it's like you don't have to look, like, am I ready for camera? Like sometimes I look. I'm like I can't I can't be bothered to like get properly dressed and put mm -hmm. makeup on and stuff like and and then I look at it and I'm like oh, I look I look bad and it, so I've got to get past that, that I look bad and just enjoy the game right right like, right people, I mean people aren't necessarily there for me to like look good half the time I don't care <laughs> half the time people don't, <laughs> don't like my level of looking good compared to what other people think is me mm. looking good it's mm -hmm. like very different like I'm up here, like, I'm like, mm. no, I look like trash. And they're like, you look great. <laughs> <laughs> um, and like, if I, I'm having like just a bad, like mental health day or something, it can be like really hard. But then once I get going, it's really fun. Um, and I feel like part, like 90% of streaming is like tech issues. <laughs> oh yeah. Trust me. I've been there. Yep. I've been there. <laughs> Um, it's like... I feel like we all have a horror story for um, like having tech issues. Actually, I'd love to. <laughs> There's one. What was your <laughs> Tazzy? What was your first stream like? The very first stream you ever did. How how good or bad was that? Oh, so the very first stream I did was when I had the terrible internet and I was streaming off my Connect, and um, it was horrifying. I think I've still got some <laughs> tips from it. Um... <laughs> <laughs> it like I didn't know how it looked until right. I went back and watched it and it was like it was like tr like what I imagine trying to watch TV in space would be like <laughs> <laughs> it was like choppy it was like there was no audio sync it was um obviously I was like on the connect so the connect was like here and the connect cam and like there's very limited control on that um i had like no alerts i like how did i read chat i think i had my laptop to read chat um and it was breaking and people were like oh oh like we can't hear you oh, no. oh it's really laggy da, 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 da. and i was like i don't know what to do and i just <laughs> want to stream. like literally i tried i streamed like i don't know like five times maybe with that terrible connection before i was like okay i give up on this until i can have better <laughs> a better internet right, connection right. um right. and it was oh like i look back but i still i still have people watching me uh, a lot of those people were like people i know personally mm -hmm. um but they still i was playing destiny uh yeah oh it was so bad <laughs> just flashbacks of how terrible it was flashbacks huh <laughs> <laughs> oh no um what about uh Bish, what was your first podcast like obviously 
other than you hated your voice. But like, <laughs> what, 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 was, what was that like? It, it's an interesting one because it was literally it was just like ten minutes long. I had a script, mm. and for people that don't know, I don't script anything now just because of uh, that sort of trauma that I had from the first ten <laughs> episodes. So everything is unscripted now. But it was, it was just. In a way, it was kind of exhilarating because I felt that, oh, fuck, yeah, I'm doing what I want to do. Do you know what I mean? Like, as cringy as it was, I was really proud of it. And I still am. That's why it's still up on there. Don't look at it. But still, it's still there. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I mean, I enjoyed my first sort of podcasting experience. I mean, later on, it kind of went a bit downhill. There was a lot of technical issues. Mm. And, you know, I didn't know how to deal with guests because it was just myself. So when the first time I had a guest on, I think it was KG Tang uh mm. voice actor and he's pretty he's a pretty big voice actor now and it was just like i don't know what the fuck to talk about and i had my braces <laughs> fitted so i was just like lisping everywhere like and doing all of that <laughs> and i was like how the fuck do i do anything and he gave me some really great advice he was just like just be yourself dude mm. and talk about whatever you want to talk about you don't even need to talk about me if you want to talk about sandwiches we'll talk about sandwiches and we <laughs> talked about sandwiches for like an hour which was pretty cool uh, and nice. it kind of changed my perspective <laughs> yeah yeah Minho, how about you? What was your first stream like? My first stream, uh, I think I started as a no cam streamer, so no, like literally nothing was just the game. <laughs> mm -hmm. But um, even e even though it was just the game, I I realized that I had no alerts. I was like, ah, <laughs> I forgot the one thing I needed, <laughs> no alerts. So I had to look at uh, OBS for for the whole stream to see who who just followed all the time. Yeah. <laughs> it was really really stressful to all type all the time. <laughs> That's so funny. You, you need to have those alerts up and ready. Pro tip yeah. for all those VTubers, make sure your alerts are, are there so that you know who's Make sure everything you. is up. Right, yeah, exactly. Test that stuff. Um, yeah, I think for me, um, my first stream, I guess, um, where I wasn't collabing, um, was basically my debut stream. And it, it was um, interesting because it, it's hella cringe. Um, I hate it. I had to do the whole thing of like expl <laughs> explaining my law, which is and uh, my yeah. my backstory is is basically the way I got around my backstory is pretending that I was from another. Uh, sorry, not pretending. I am from another universe. In case you didn't know, <laughs> <laughs> pretending. Uh, yeah, sorry. Um, but uh, yeah, so essentially it's the same same kind of thing. But like I watched it back and. Um, you know, it, it, the only things that were scuffed was um, just moving from from one place to like one scene to another and um, uh, getting the, the game up and running with the audio. That was a pain in the butt as well. Um, but mm. for, otherwise, it was mostly OK. I, I used some of that stuff. This is so funny. So um, Niji Sanji had an audition quite recently for like EN yeah. uh, VTubers. Um, so Niji Sanji, for those that don't know, is a huge agency. They're probably the biggest agency in Japan for virtual YouTubers. Um, their roster of talent is immensely huge. Pretty much every single one of them can sing. They're incredibly talented people. Um, and so they were looking for some English speaking um, VTubers to join them. And at that point, like my, when I just, that is literally when I just started VTubing. So I didn't really know what, I was going to do. I didn't really know my content. I didn't really have myself. I wasn't there. It wasn't a hundred percent complete, like say it. Like I know my content. I know exactly what I do. I know what's funny, what's not. Um, so the, the tape that I submitted, I watched back quite recently and I hated it. It was, I, it, it was awful. God awful. It, it, yeah anyway i just never want to see it again i deleted it i've deleted every everything like um i think after i put it up it had like three views and i was like oh no because it was unlisted as well i was like they've already seen this this crap what is going on um anyway that got deleted and then i created a new one for another vtuber um group and then like apparently it's much better but the the um the one i created is basically my now my trailer for the introduction to to me on my youtube channel so it seems like again it's 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 nice to see the progression from all VTubers from your first one. I, this is going to be a really crude um, analogy, but the, the your first stream is basically like uh, 
losing your virginity like the first time is always the worst what time the is what i'm gonna say <laughs> and this is what i'm going with it's the first time oh, is really? always the worst time and then it just gets better right <laughs> as you go along so <laughs> at least hopefully what the hell is this? all right all right uh pg-13 <laughs> so, <laughs> and, um, yeah anyway there you go that's the analogy i hope you i hope you enjoyed it so <laughs> <laughs> Before we move on to actual VTubers <laughs> and streamers and stuff like that, what is one piece of advice that you will give to new creators? Uh, Minho, what is one piece of advice that you would give to new creators? Stop looking at numbers, you assholes! Stop looking at numbers, you <laughs> Please assholes! Please just stop! <laughs> Alright, cool. Bish, one piece of advice you'd give to new creators? Uh, just fucking do it. Just fucking do it, alright. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> Kelsey, one piece of advice you'd give to, to new creators? Concentrate on the content and just enjoying it. Just have fun. We love this. Concentrate on the content, enjoy it and have fun. So that this is our key takeaway is number one, concentrate on the content and just enjoy it. Number two, stop looking at numbers, you fucking assholes. And number three, <laughs> just fucking do it. Just yeah. fucking do it. I think yeah, that is perfect. solid advice. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, I think that comes on to the next topic, which is, again, I, I really want to address this. Um, but mm -hmm. what are your thoughts on um, traditional streamers um, versus VTubers? Is there, do you, like, is it, obviously there's been a rise of VTubers on Twitch uh, as well. Um, mm -hmm. And it's been huge. I think there was a hashtag trending a couple of days ago called VTuber Uprising. <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, obviously there's a, still a huge audience that don't know anything about VTubers as well. Um, and so, um, what do we all think as a group, as a collective, um, are maybe advantages or disadvantages of, of being a VTuber versus a traditional streamer? And do we think that, um, VTubers should be a separate entity and not be treated, um, as part of the same platform, as part of the same audience? Wait for, for some, anyone can jump in. Let's go. <laughs> I don't know. Can I interject or? Yeah, go, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah go ahead. ahead. Um, yeah, I think for me, VTubing is pretty cool. I don't really see it as like a versus type situation where it's the VTubers against the world. Uh, I just kind of <laughs> consider them as, as streamers, as content creators. They just don't have in most cases they just don't show their faces right so i kind of relate to that a lot as a podcaster i never really showed my face until recently so for me it's kind of the same realm as that they're just regular people and i don't really see the um, any negatives towards it yeah they can be in terms of the community but you get that with all communities but i see it as a win-win all around because yeah there is this vtuber uprising but it's bringing more people to these platforms bringing more people to twitch bringing more people to youtube making more money for those platforms and then they can reinvest in them so i don't see it as a negative thing um as such i also wrote something else down as well i'm trying to remember um, <laughs> yeah scripted? i think it was, uh, scripted what, <laughs> yeah, no this bit is scripted yeah i have to write this down because i don't know what to say because i don't want to sound like an idiot but um <laughs> what i like about vtubing is that it's very accessible mm. yes there is levels of, of which you know you're paying for rigs and whatnot but at least in the case of Minho, he paid like, what, $6? So, I mean, that's that's a pretty low bar for entry in terms of monetary reasons, right? So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think it's very accessible, especially if someone doesn't want to show their face or if someone wants to remain anonymous, as most VTubers do. So, yeah, I think it's pretty cool all around. Okay. Um, and uh, Minho, how about you? I mean, I'm I'm pretty sure there's no versus thing. Uh, both uh, traditional streamers and VTubers are content creators, mm -hmm. so like uh, <laughs> there is really no reason for this pe for uh, people to think there's a versus thing, because like if I see a traditional streamer that is uh, interesting, I will after my stream probably rate them over a VTuber that is probably not as interesting. Mm. So yeah, it's it's basically I believe that everyone should just help each other when it comes to streaming because this is pretty hard <laughs> it gets re it gets real hard when it comes to content so yeah it's just there's no versus thing it's just uh try to help each other out and everything will be fine right, yeah right, just right. like that okay and tazzy how about you uh like i agree like i don't see like vtubers as like a separate thing that it's just other content creators that happen to be like really cute 
Mm. anime characters <laughs> like, i don't think there's much of a difference like as a some people as a vtuber are themselves mm. like i've literally just started to dive into uh like watching more vtubers i had like a couple that i like dabbled in mm-hmm. like well Ooh. it's all the fun now on youtube like clicked on um but recently i've like just dived into it um and like I don't I don't watch their content and think, oh, this is a VTuber. I just watch the content, like this is enjoyable content. Right. Uh and like on the flip mm-hmm. side, um some some people uh use themselves as like a, they play a character, right? Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. even though they don't have like they're using their own face and their their own self, but they're still playing a character. Um so like you can do both with both if mm. that makes sense yeah yeah and so it's like mm. well there is really no difference you're literally talking about <laughs> how they look <laughs> right 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 um and it's and I, I think it's a, a little bit weird just to throw up on that i think it's we we haven't got to a stage yet in in considering that we are just both content creators we haven't really got to a stage yet where you see collaborations or co-streams with traditional streamers and vtubers yeah is there, there's um, maybe um uh, miko maybe that. is the only one that branches that i don't know if you've seen yeah that. i i i i i do i do that a lot uh mm. to stream with uh people who aren't uh vtubers mm. because like um uh most of the vtubers are uh the time zones are way too uh scuffed <laughs> there's there's <laughs> no way to do collabs all the time yeah so i was like I'll I'll try to branch out more, and I found a good community I'm always with. So yeah, <laughs> it's pretty easy for me now to uh, find a uh, non VTubers to rate. See, uh, Saya, and that was an interesting point you you made about you're not seeing many VTubers collabing with traditional streamers and content creators. But I don't know. In my experience, I've seen a lot. Like if you're if you're talking about the Trash Taste podcast, right? They yeah. had I can't even remember her name, yeah, yeah, but yeah. they had a VTuber on someone yeah. from Hollow Life, um, yes. and even like the V Shoujo girls, right? They collab a lot mm. with uh, Noble and Nux Taku and all, all of these like even PewDiePie and stuff. So right. there is a lot of that going on. I, I would say more so in the mainstream, not so much in yeah. like the independent um, yeah. creator side. Of things. Yeah, and that's probably how how obviously because I've been heavily like. I, I lurk that that community day in day out the indie independent community and again it's probably because i haven't seen it um in that community that i'm I, I have this view on that but maybe it's something that is probably a market that um independent vtubers should be looking at to to create content along the lines of like collaborations with like traditional streamers um oh they definitely should do that mm-hmm. and what do we think about obviously the the vtubing culture um is heavily based on the idol culture that is in japan right so yes, yes. um it, and this is across niji sanji and hollow live the two biggest agencies for vtubers in japan um they don't do face reveals it's it's not it's not anything that they're they're even allowed to do really um mm. so mm. what do we feel about how do we feel about doing face reveals how do we feel about vtubers and whether they're independent or mainstream doing v- face reveals is that something that we should embrace is it okay to do that or is or like is it okay to to hide it as well like what do we how do we feel what's our our, our opinions on that sort of thing and i'm going to throw this at you first minho because i know you've done a face reveal yes <laughs> um, <laughs> i mean i i don't see the problem with a face reveal since we're independent streamers mm. uh it's more of an issue if uh one day you might get uh recruited for a company but for now, a face review is fine. It'll, it'll just uh, disappear into the internet like uh, a Hollow Life member's YouTube channel once did. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 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 but for, for now, a face review is fine. Uh, most people, uh, a lot of people do not like it when uh, we do face reviews, but it's more, most of the time it's because they, they were uh, self-confident about themselves that they wanted to do this face review. Um, or some other times they wanted to be more connected with the viewers so a face review was uh, what they thought was was gonna be making people more connected and more comfortable with talking to them or like walking to inside the streams or whatever 
So for for my perspective, face reviews are fine. If you want to hide your face, it's also fine. It's just based on what you like and what you don't like, honestly. Mm. Um, and then Fish, mm. coming from uh, a fan of of VTubers, do you think what how what are your thoughts on face reveals? Do you think it breaks the immersion? Would you prefer people not do face reveals? It depends because, yeah, I I kind of like face reveals to a certain extent but it's mm. only if the person is comfortable with doing that and i understand a lot of people aren't necessarily comfortable with that mm. but mm. at the same time it does break the immersion like for example if kizna i was like hey i'm gonna do a face reveal then it just destroys her whole character like she's she's supposed to be an ai so yeah, right. it, it depends yeah. on the situation if you've crafted yourself a story and a uh, you know a persona then i don't know how how I feel about doing a face reveal because it breaks that persona, breaks the immersion completely. But if you're someone that is VTubing and it's just yourself, you know, like you're not playing a, a particular character, you're not role playing, mm. then I'm okay with face reveals in, in that sense. Mm -hmm. Okay. And and Tazzy, how about you? What you know, obviously as a traditional streamer, um, who has their face on the camera pretty much all the time, um, <laughs> you know. I, the question I'd like to throw at you is, how do you feel about some of the traditional streamers like Pokimane, uh, uh, Lily Chu, and now PewDiePie switching over to things like avatars? Um, is that something that um, you think is interesting? Do you think it's something that they should be diving into? Is it like a sellout? What, what are your thoughts on it? Um, my thoughts are the same on like any content choices like let people do what they want to do mm. like <laughs> just like why, why does everyone have to control what everyone else does if you don't like that content just don't watch it right right, don't, right. Watch it. Mm -hmm. don't, don't like talk about just stop consuming it um because it's like it's i find it weird because um saying like breaking the immersion but like if you find out the voice actor for a show you watch i don't feel like you're like oh my god that character's never going to exist anymore well, that for me, is anyway, so true. I, I never, I never feel like like for me, a character is always a character. Like even if they're like a live action actor, I'm like that person is that character for as long as they're on that show on that screen. That's all I'm seeing, um, mm -hmm. and I feel like that can translate to VTubing. And I saw mm -hmm. like the some of the drama around Pokemon, and I was like, look, at the end of the day. Uh, if people are interested in like VTubers for just VTubers, they're going to continue to watch VTubers that mm. have always been there. Um, like I wish I knew more about VTubing like way back when I started because I have always wanted to be an anime character. But... <laughs> 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 and be like, I did want to like, uh, even now, like I, I have an, I have an original character design that I have. Um, mm. And like learning about vtubing like literally in the past like couple of weeks yeah um i've been like interested so it's like it's so interesting so that that you're a vtuber because obviously <laughs> you're really not as a vtuber <laughs> so like it just totally got thrown in um because that's something that i've always been interested in like there's so many times i've just been like i just want to stop being like me Mm. on the internet like it's so it can be so invasive mm. um and i'd love mm. like just anonymity anonymity back on the internet mm. um and have a space where i can just be like anonymous and not everyone like knows your life people don't know like what you're doing who you're dating da, da, da. like yeah. i just yeah, enjoy um so i completely forgot the question to begin with <laughs> <laughs> no i think, I think it, it was um it's some really good insight like i think you've provided some really really key points um like i didn't think you know the 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 voice actor analogy i didn't it didn't occur to me that um you could apply that same logic to it because you're right 100 percent. like you can fall in love with characters and and um you know the, go and find out their voice actor and then regardless of what they look like they're still that character it doesn't matter like it, it's you're right it doesn't i don't know why we don't apply that to the same thing as vtubers and some people do not gonna lie some people do and i think um Again, there's, there, I did, I've started my journey keeping the brand separate. Um, I'm going to keep them as separate as possible until so, I'm, I guarantee someone's going to find me out 100% because of my, my circles. <laughs> someone is 100% is going to find me out. And it's okay. If they find me out, they find me out, right? It's like, yeah. and this is something that they don't talk about in, in um, 
the the bigger agencies that we shouldn't really talk about but like realistically a lot of us know what those hololive girls and the niji sanji team look like in real life um a lot of us have seen their older channels and what they were before but we still yeah, yeah. appreciate them as vtubers regardless of 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 who they were before what their content was before or what they look like and i think that should be applied mm. across vtubers especially in the western world in the independent independent vtuber world where the western vtubers have the most I would say they're most lenient in terms of what they can do and can't do. So you won't see um, the Hollow Live girls or the Niji Sanji team like crazy horny, right? Or like, because if I, I know you're Unless laughing you're right you. now, you're, you're laughing <laughs> now. Sometimes <laughs> <laughs> the, the independent community is horny as fuck. Okay, like, I don't know. Uh, oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> um, but they can't do that because they have restrictions, right? And and also they've got restrictions about who they can collab with. So. You, the great thing again is like you see more male female collaborations oh. in the western vtuber community than you will in agencies because they have restrictions around that sort of stuff um mm -hmm. and so it's nice to have that you've got lgbt um qa i vtubers as well you've got um vtubers from all walks of life you've um i think the most the thing we the vtuber community lacks and it's starting to to increase now is diversity um, in terms mm, of their yep. appearance for for um, for VTubers and and the aesthetic that they pick, but obviously people pick their aesthetic based on what they what is um, they find appealing and or what is the trend. So I get that. Well, it's whatever. But I think we do, it's one place an area that we definitely need more um, diversity in. And you know, I've I've come in. Um, one of my fellow VTuber friends was like, you know, if you could recreate it, like your your thing. One question I have for you is like, why haven't you made them? Um, why haven't you made your your avatar tanned? Because I'm Asian, and I'm like, you know, I didn't even think about it that way. Um, because if you watch anime, like everyone is basically fair skinned, but obviously they're all Japanese, which like it's it's just it's just a thing, right? It's the aesthetic. And I was like, you know what? I went for like a Dragon Ball aesthetic. Like, I don't mm. know if you can see it, but like, that's, that's kind of aesthetic that I went for. Um, and so it, it kind of really started a thought in my head about, um, something that maybe we need to do or, or be better at as a whole as VTubers, which is like that whole diversity thing. But I say that, but then at the same time, you know, you've got freaking fish VTubers, there's a bubble, t there's a bubble <laughs> tea VTuber, there's a literal VTuber who is a crab, a literal crab with a pirate hat on, like, the, I, I can't... There's a, there's a shrimp prince VTuber. There's a shrimp <laughs> prince? Seen Listen, I've seen VTubers for pretty much every <laughs> single animal off the face of the earth, yeah. as well as, like, mm. um, you know, mythical Isn't creatures. The light bulb and... VTuber, you know? A light bulb VTuber? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there, there's a lot, there's a lot of things in the community. <laughs> Right, I right. recently downloaded Vroid. Oh, okay. Um, oh. <laughs> like, okay. trying to learn how to make, like, make an avatar on mm. that. And, um, and like, people like, oh, you can, like, get a load of pre-made stuff, da da da, and, like, trying to use the base one. And I was like, how do I, how do I make the skin, like, not white? <laughs> 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 so many times. And I just don't even know, like, I probably would have like a rough avatar made up right, by right. now. I just knew how to like change the skin color <laughs> and get like a good skin color. Yeah. And I'm like, I I don't. It would be easier to make it pink than <laughs> right, right. Yeah, honestly, <laughs> yeah. I, I think it's it's hella I wanted to, I wanted a tan character, but I don't think that's gonna happen with the color schemes that they give us. So yeah, and I just like, yes. I've watched so many tutorials, like just trying it, and I'm like, I can't, I can't figure it out. And like, I recently started um, playing VR chat as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like, I was like, oh, I can make, like, I was like, oh, I can practice uh, mm -mm. making them. I know, like, one of my friends said, if you make one in v Vroid, I, I can like transfer over right, right, right. For, for VR chat. Um, and I was like, cool, but like, I just can't even get started because I'm just, like I could make my character just in like the the base white that they give you, <laughs> yeah. and uh, like go back to it later. But like it's just frustrating me because I'm just like I just want I can't work on it without knowing. <laughs> like, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> just... 
yeah so it's, it's interesting you, you say about diversity because I feel like if you're especially if you're like trying to get into it and you just got the basics like you don't have money to pay someone to do it for mm. you um yeah you just will, like want to learn how to do it yourself da, da, da. it's like there's it's really hard to like just get in with like a diverse character because how do you make one <laughs> i don't know <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Right. It's, it's... i think that's like a bit impossible <laughs> v-roid is a uh, hella difficult yeah you need somebody that knows v-roid in order to do that that sort of stuff um it, it, it's really good um in the sense that you can create such brilliant characters i know there's some people that i sort of um there's a group that i i um collab with a lot and one of the the girls in the group she created her avatar which is basically this pink spider thing but she also created basically a mini lich king um so she like she has the ability to be able to do all of that stuff and i think it's a case of like moving things from photoshop over to that but it was well too complicated for me i literally when i create i try to find the image of my my v-roid when i first made it I've, it's gone i apparently deleted that completely out of my life but like um it was just, it was just, it was so bad it was a similar design to what i have now but like it, the hair and, and and stuff like that was the image that i was going for but it was you're right it's, it's hella difficult i ended up just using a bunch of default stuff and the default hoodie um just um that's not a, a <laughs> that's not coming at you you know but yeah the default hoodie um and um... I, I love the default hoodie it's the perfect <laughs> one for me <laughs> i have it in real life too so i was like heck yeah <laughs> um but yeah it, like it, it was hella difficult and you're right it, it there i know people who have created um live 2d stuff so they've adopted live 2d models for like 10 bucks and all mm -hmm. they've needed to do was rig it themselves if they knew how to do that um so there's people that have started their journey in into vtubing from from almost nothing like pretty much like the, the bare minimum but there's also people that have spent like ridiculous amounts of money um you know doing it and, and when i say ridiculous we're talking upwards of like i don't know up to a thousand pounds depending on who you go to which is a lot of money mm. to invest into you go, your VTuber. You go professional, it's really, really too much. <laughs> right, 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 right. You're right. paying like a few a few months of rent uh, just to get a model without the rigging sometimes. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, so it's like, it, it is a lot of money um, and not everyone can afford to do it, which is why you kind of should be starting with something smaller like a PNG or, um, or, or V-Roid or something like that. But, you know, mm. it... it no one's going to judge you for being a PNG VTuber. No one's going to judge you for using yeah. a Vroid. No one's going to judge you for using Live 2D. It's literally an aesthetic. And I think this is the biggest thing. The difference between, again, another difference between VTubers in the Western world versus VTubers in, the, um, uh, in, in Japan is in Japan, they start off with 2D, right? And then the biggest thing is for them to go 3D. It's huge yeah. for them to go 3D. They have to hit a milestone of like, I can't remember, like a... a 80k or something subs to, to to get that 3d avatar and they all want it on the flip side of things in the western world in the independent world they all most of the people start off as 3d and they strive to have that 2d so we're the complete opposite um yeah that, that's a uh, i went from 2d to 3d so i was like <laughs> and, I, and i don't really know why that's there um I guess it's just a preference is what we see because we see them as the VTubers we see are all, basically we always see them as 2D. So maybe it's like that's their standard one. This is we want to be their standard. Um, mm. But I, I personally, don't, I think, I don't know, maybe Minho, you can say, tell me, but you have more freedom with what you can do with a 3D avatar than you can with a live 2D. Yeah, because uh, if you, in the long run, when you have the 3D model, you're going, you're, if you have enough money and like, your channel is is growing at a like a fast rate and you get all the money already that you need for the full tracking thing mm. so like your your hands will be like you can you can do like more fan service or something like uh when you're talking it, it's not just like your head moving all that your your hands can be talking too like <laughs> you can you can use your hand gestures just to talk to like you would in real life mm. so mm. with 3D is is more of uh in the long run you're going to have a full body like uh uh, motion track, motion traction for right, right. things you will do in the future. For two D, is just uh, if if you look too much to the left, your your model looks a bit weird. <laughs> so, because yeah. it's just two D. <laughs> yeah, my model is it's partly because of my rigging, but my model doesn't. It's yeah. <laughs> Sometimes mm. it does it does weird things. 
Um, Bish, what do you prefer, two D or three D? Uh, I mean, as an anime fan, I would say two D, but that's because I really shit on a lot of three D work. I know that sounds really bad, but I used to I used to do um three D modeling and stuff in university and stuff like that. So I understand, you know, what it needs to be good and to do like mm-hmm. character rigging and and um, actually setting up bones. If you want to get really advanced into things, but I don't know. It's like there's only a certain number of VTubers that can actually stand in 3D, and it's just Project Melody. Like, have you seen her? Like the way her room is set up and shit, and she has like multiple mm. different cameras. And I, I can appreciate that because I'm like, shit. I know how much work has gone into that. I know how much money that shit costs. Mm. But for me, I kind of prefer the 2D just because I don't know. Live 2D has always been so interesting to me because I was kind of interested in um, uh, visual novels. And a lot of the stuff that we get for review would be live 2D visual novels. And I'm like, wow, this shit is amazing. You can do crazy shit. And you've proven it here, Sayo, as well. So I kind of prefer the 2D over the 3D. Mm. Just the personal preference. Mm. And I guess I haven't really addressed this properly, but for both of you, Tazzy and Bish, what were your initial thoughts when you find found out that I'm currently 2D <laughs> VTuber? <laughs> <laughs> Hmm. Uh, I was really like, cool. Uh, teach me. <laughs> <laughs> and also, oh my god, you're so cute. <laughs> Dish, what about you? Um, I didn't necessarily think the cuteness. I was just like, what the hell? Like, he's he's a he's a VTuber now. But I thought that was like, wow, man, this guy is really putting himself out there. And I I kind of enjoyed that aspect of it. Not. So much that you've become a VTuber, but the fact that you're you're doing new things and mm. it's kind of badass. Like when I see someone doing that shit, I'm like, dude, <laughs> you've made it in life. <laughs> and, and, and also like the so, fact that you have like gone no, like go on. <laughs> completely separate um Oh separate mm, brands well, and identities. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Because yeah. like I don't I, like I think one of the like pros for VTubing is that you can have that. That, mm. like i mean uh, on, uh, you know the word yeah <laughs> and you don't, you don't have to put yourself out there necessarily and i also like yeah i yeah, yeah. i think i think um part of the reason um and to be completely honest with you of why i wanted to keep them is because i didn't want to use my uh follow account as me um and mm. my audience as me as a way to boost my naturally boost my numbers as a vtuber um so it's a little bit of imposter syndrome in that sense um i didn't want to feel like i cheated it cheated the system um by using Uh, that same audience and um you know it's that's both a double-edged sword right because ultimately that same audience that i have as me as a brand will probably like the stuff that i do because i'm pretty much the same person just with a different face right (laughs) um so I'm I'm kind of restricting myself in in terms of growth in that audience, which is outside the VTubing community, which is a good thing. But also, I just want it to be more natural and more more real as well. Um, and and so Minho, with with you, like, do you have people that know that you're a VTuber yet? Have you done like reveals to your closest people, and like, what have they thought about you becoming a VTuber? Well, oh, they, they 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 basically swore a lot. Like, oh my god, really? <laughs> what? The... <laughs> they were they were really surprised. But uh, I think like a few of them expected it because of uh, uh, since my 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 original streams were based around my voice. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so like, uh, most sometimes it was ASMR. Sometimes it was uh, after a long day, I will speak in a lower tone just to make people relax all right, that right, right. so like like when when they when they realize like hmm he's he's probably gonna do something since he's not gonna really show face cam streams uh-huh. <laughs> and then i i asked around about vtubers then i i guess they they took it from there like ah <laughs> looks like he's transitioning <laughs> and all that uh, okay. so some of them were ready some of them were not ready <laughs> yeah I, I have a couple of people that weren't ready um i was playing um Okay, if we're going to take like the traditional Call of Duty crowd, I was playing with a couple of friends in, in Call of Duty and I recorded some of that mm. stuff and I put it on, on YouTube. And I was like, look, did you know you were in some of my videos? Like, I just want you to know. Here you go. And I put it out there. And um, one of my friends was just like, 
his first words was, what the fuck is this avatar thing there? Uh, and, then, <laughs> and then I was like, wait, what do you mean? And he's like, what the fuck is it? Why is there some random fucking cartoon shit blocking the screen? And I'm like, dude, watch it. And then he was watching it. It's like, wait, why is your voice coming out of it? Wait, why is it moving? Wait. <laughs> it's like, is that you? What the fuck is this shit? And I was like, okay, this is this is what's going on. Let me explain to you. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, it was, but it was, he still thinks it's weird, but it's, you know, there's, there's going to be people like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. And so um, I guess uh, before we, we start to finish off, one thing I'd like to, to know um, is what it, what's the community like as a traditional streamer? What's your community like as a podcaster? And what's your community like, Minho, as a VTuber? Um, and are there any dark sides <laughs> to it um, and dark sides of streaming that you need, you want people or you need people to be aware of? Um, so let's start with you, Tazzy. Um, what's your community like and are there any dark sides and what do people need to be aware of? uh my community is random i think a lot of people that watch me are lurkers like uh and oh wait i know a lot of people that watch me are lurkers like my <laughs> chat is very slow uh and i'll get like people that have consistently been watching me for like years and they'll be like randomly pop up and chat and be like how hey how are you and i'm like oh my god like you've not been about for ages and they're like oh no I'm, i've just been lurking and i'm like okay that's completely fine like i'm so okay with uh, lurk away um it can get a little disheartening sometimes when there's like no one in chat uh and then you find mm. out later that like no people were watching you um but i'm okay just like consume my content however it's easiest for you that's the point of it like mm. I, I can't like i don't want to control how you interact with me as a streamer um and then like the but yeah they're they're great um i feel like i attract people that are, are, are like me and like a lot of the oddballs and misfits and uh, <laughs> like like I said I'm a variety streamer so I just get like the most random people like I, I was streaming Need for Speed so I got people like coming in because I was streaming Need for Speed and they're like oh wow like, <laughs> this chick's like streaming Need for, Need for Speed that's right. pretty cool and then followed me for that but then like a week later I'm on The Sims and they're like still watching me yeah uh, even though they they were like, oh, I generally only watch like uh car like car games mm -hmm. and now like um so yeah, I think I have like a pretty cool community. A lot of people in my community are like friends, mm. other friend streamers, mm -hmm. like people that they know. Um and like I think the dark sides to be aware of is um which is just like content in general. Obviously you, you get trolls mm. and not very nice people. Um, and when you're live streaming, that can be like, that's instantly there. Mm. Um, so I really love Jackbox games. I really wish I could play Jackbox games, but like it's so hard uh, because I just get a load of racists. Mm. Um, mm -mm. And like, it's really, it can be really tough. Like I have a really thick skin because I just built it up from being like bullied since I was a kid. Mm. Uh, and so most of it goes over my head, but if I'm having like a not great day, it's like instantly there. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, so mm. just like have like auto mod set up if you're not very good at dealing with it. Just like remember that like it's your space. Um, like you don't owe anyone anything and you have like complete right to instantly like just ban people for life. Like you do not owe anyone a second chance. Like you don't mm -hmm. owe anyone anything. Uh, right. If someone comes into your space and makes you or your or your community uncomfortable, just get them out of there. Like, don't if you're not comfortable with it, like, don't accept it. Just bye. <laughs> <laughs> no, I hear you. It's, it's your house. Get the hell out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, uh, Bish, how about you? Uh, you know what? There, there is not really much toxicity in the podcasting community because. We're just a bunch of old geezers. Like I noticed, <laughs> at least when I started, everyone else that was podcasting was like 40 and above. And it was mostly like the BBC and, you know, boring shit, right? Um, yeah. But now everyone's getting in, involved in podcasting. It's changing a little bit. But still, there's some really nice communities out there. R slash podcasting, R slash podcasts uh, on Reddit. And, you know, Reddit can't is not always the, the funnest place to be. <laughs> not always the most accepting place. But... 
they are, I would say, very helpful. Like you can ask a fucking dumb question and someone will answer, someone will help you. Same with like the Apple forums as well. There's this one guy, I can't remember his name, but he's like in his 50s. And he just, all he, I think all he does all day is just answer people's questions. But he's like a wealth of knowledge. Uh-huh. So the community, because it is so old in a sense, because mm. this thing has been around maybe 20 years and plus, etc. So because it's been established for so long, I think everyone kind of understands. There's not really much competition either because... I don't know. I think that a lot of YouTubers kind of compete with each other because of algorithms and right, like right. Um, CPMs and all this. But because we don't really get paid in a traditional way, we, we sell like advertising, right? In a similar way to like radio and television. So mm-hmm. there isn't that much competition because everyone can kind of eat. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. But I will say in terms of my community a lot of i don't want to say they're shitheads but a lot of them are like memers like they will oh, okay yeah they will take something you said and put it out of context but not in like an incriminating way but like right. once i was like i noticed a, an anime's character and i was like oh you know what i like the animation and i like how smooth it was but i was talking about them running and or like landing or, or something and then like maybe like as soon as i put it maybe like two days later every- Everyone was like, oh my god, Bish has a foot fetish. He's into feet. And I can't get out of that now because every episode that I do, everyone's like, when is Bish going to talk about feet? So it's like, it's stuff like that. But I, I know they do it in um in a nice way. They don't mean any harm. But yeah. I don't like it. I'm not into feet, guys. Come on. <laughs> stop playing. I don't know. Maybe this is going to solidify it now. <laughs> it's, 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 yeah, it's exactly. More people are going to do it. Yeah. No, I hear you. I get. I get you talked about feet in another podcast. <laughs> right, right, right. Damn it. I don't know what happened, but uh, when I started um, collaborating with a couple of these, this, this group, um, mm-hmm. somebody shipped me with um, this, uh, this other VTuber. Um, his his name is Jun. I'm gonna shout him out. And like from then, I don't know what happened, but it's 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 basically kicked off. So apparently, we're some next like <laughs> um, VTuber couple. And I'm like, uh. Jun, Jun, how the hell did we do this? Like, I, and then now Jun is basically the bottom in the couple, and I'm apparently the top. And now we've, <laughs> we've got we've got fan art coming in. It's gonna be launched. We've got me and him. We've got a, like a Valentine's date where we're gonna do a podcast, and everyone's like super hyped well, because it's the first yeah. time that we're gonna collaborate. And I'm like, hell, dude, amazing, it's gonna be. Man. I don't know what it's gonna be like because we haven't got anything planned. Um, and I don't know how this happened. I don't know how this happened, but I'm being shipped with a with a demon <laughs> VTuber. Um, and it's it's a thing, like it's it's hilarious. But we're gonna release you know, the, the fan art on on that day as well. So. You know, it's it's very interesting nice, that nice. you mentioned that. Like your that that one meme became this whole like cornerstone of of you know your your personality and stuff like that. I I relate to that a lot because a lot of people ask me, oh, bish, how do you get sponsorships and shit like that? I just fucking meme about it. Like I'll be like, just sponsor me, Nando's, sponsor me. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nando's I haven't sponsored me yet, but yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. gonna get that soon. Yeah. But it's it's stuff like that. When you put shit out in the world and you don't know why it's there, like why people think these things and why people do it, but you just have to go with the flow, man. And yeah. I fucking love shit like that. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Just just do it. Uh, yeah. Minho, how about you? What's your community like? And of course, you've been through some stuff um, recently. So I, I'd love to hear like your side and, and how you're dealing with like the the amount of toxicity that exists in the VTuber community <laughs> as a whole. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, my streaming community is great. The Twitter community, <laughs> not so much. Uh, <laughs> we'll talk about the uh, Twitter community first. Mm. Um, in my opinion, there are people who are faking to be positive to get uh, uh, followers because mm. of how some positive uh, VTubers are gaining uh, popularity right now because uh, there are people like uh, pe- um, VTuber of the day or something like that that right. are promoting people. Oh, yeah, yeah, I've seen that. He's, ge- he's, he's, genu- he's genuine about this. Mm. But, uh, you can see in the community that uh, there are <laughs> a lot of people who are faking this positivity because they, 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 they see it from someone else. Right, right, right. Which is, which is a problem, because I, I did call, call out some people by calling them cloud chasers, and I didn't add anyone, uh-huh. but they got really mad in the comments. Oh, no. <laughs> I, was, I was like, you just ousted yourself, <laughs> but I'm going to delete this thread to save your dumb ass. <laughs> <laughs> I said no one's name, but you got so angry. I'm like, are you stupid or what? Like, come on. <laughs> it's <a> stupid, right? <laughs> it's, 
there was no name. You just had you just had to like. Uh, ignore the tweet, but you. But the moment you commented on the tweet, being angry, that was literally over for you. If I didn't delete the comment thread, yikes! And then there's of course, there are people who uh create burner accounts just to send hate mail. Mm. Um, many many of them don't think it's fair that I grew faster than them in like one to two months. Right, right, right. Because like uh. I started with no company, no, knew no one in in the community on Twitter. So basically, I started with uh thirty followers, mm. and then in one to two months, I shot up to seven hundred or something like that. Right, right. So a lot of them uh took them took it to burn their accounts <laughs> to send uh, hate mail, and it it it, it would slowly get uh, really bad for my mental that. Ultimately, uh, as uh, most of the community that I was close with knows, mm. I quit Twitter until like one to two years. So uh, for right for right now, I'm just taking one to two year break from Twitter to avoid all of this mess. <laughs> I'll come back if I want to, but <laughs> uh, my my friends who are basically uh, partnered right now on, on Twitch are telling me just don't go back. <laughs> there's there's no point on going back. <laughs> you you can go back for like one to two like tweets to. Uh, Tell people about certain stuff, but like that's it. You don't focus too much on Twitter because Twitter followers really don't matter for streaming. They yeah. won't follow you all the way. Yeah, which is what some people don't understand, and they keep uh trying to build a community on Twitter before they go streaming. But once they went, they once they go streaming, uh, is there's a, a small chance even three people will, will turn up to your streams. Like <laughs> you, you gotta understand, Twi- Twitter is great for um short content you know all the shit posting all that twitch uh, youtube streaming or or video edits takes a lot of time and some people might not even like uh what you provide as a streamer but uh, will like what you provide as a like twitter on like twitter so yeah that that community is a bit toxic but of course there's always the positive like people around there mm. yeah you hit some really good, a re- that, like probably the most important point that i would say in my research as well is that listen dtubers and this is for all content creators in in general your social media your other social media platforms your twitter your instagram whatever it is that you're using people if you still use facebook listen those those followers right (laughs) they don't equate to what happens in your twitch streams and and minho is 100 percent correct there are there are um social media presences there are vtubers that have a thousand plus followers and you go click on their their twitch and they have like less than a hundred people that have subbed or followed them on twitch and so like yes build your social media platform on twitter but remember your social media platform on twitter is going to stay the hell on twitter guys you need to get them to figure out a way to move them across if you want to move them across um you know keep your content similar so that they know what to expect when they move to your twitch but like ultimately don't expect your twitch followers to uh, sorry your twitter followers to equal your twitch followers or your youtube subs and I, I want to add to that, like, don't don't be on a social media just for the sake of being on that social media. Like, be on it because you like that social media. Like, there is no point because it, it will you'll come off so disingenuous, um, and like people pick up on that. Mm. Um, mm. I've kind of like stepped back from Twitter as well because I just find like it's so negative. Like, there's so much going on in the world, yeah. and like Twitter just <laughs> sucks you into this. Like, everyone complaining about everything um mm. but like instagram is a a, a place i enjoy using mm. uh and um like it doesn't directly translate like people were i have very different content on my instagram to my youtube or to my twitch and so i like know that they're not all going to be there mm. but some of them do because they just like anything that i'm going to make they're like what are you doing <laughs> <laughs> you everywhere and some people just aren't like that they're there for like one part of you um but so it's really important to to be on social media that you enjoy um so that you can create great content and then maybe if you get really big then you just have someone else run it for you it's that's fun. true <laughs> <laughs> that's very true get a manager you know. <laughs> Uh, I think we've had some some really good some really good tips for brand new creators out there, whether you're a VTuber or even a traditional streamer or podcasting. We've had some really good tips about creating content. So all of you should take note of what we've said in here. Um before we end it off, um let's do a quick social media plug. Um Minho, where can we find you? What's your Twitch? 
just just how my Twitch Minho VT. That's it. Okay, <laughs> Twitch cool. TV uh, slash Minho VT. Yeah. Perfect. We're going to put all of this in the comments as well, uh, in the description, sorry, so that you can find it um, just in case. But it's always nice to hear where them say it. Bish, where can we find you? Uh, the best place to find me, if you go to getlifepodcast.com and then forward slash G-A-L-P, they'll give us gaming podcast and then slash kunai for the anime podcast. And that's it. Boom. And then Tazzy, where can we find you? Uh, so on Twitch, you can find me at T-A-Z-Z-Y-X and then on YouTube, Twitter and Instagram is just Tazzy without the X. There we go. And of course, if you want to find me, you can find me right here on Twitter. I forgot my Twitter. <laughs> Say uh, VT, that's S E U H V T. And then on all my links are there. So just do that. And I'm sure this video will go up on there. Um, thank you all for being my wonderful, wonderful guests today. Um, it has been a pleasure having you all here and what great guests we have had for our first episode. I've just gone and selected the wrong one. There we go. <laughs> what great <laughs> guests we have for our first episode. I'm going to have to edit that out now. This is great. Um, <laughs> what great yeah. guests we've had for our first episode. Really, really love that you've been here. And thank you all very much for tuning in. We hope to see all of you audiences um, for the next episode, which will probably be at the end of February, maybe, hopefully or March. <laughs> we'll see. Okay. <laughs> this is me out. Thanks for, thanks for tuning in. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.